What kind of a note taker are you? This question is part playful and part purposeful. Playful insofar as the categories that I'm about to present to you are much more anecdotal than they are scientific. They're categories that I've come up with after years of teaching and after hundreds of conversations with undergraduate students about taking notes. Purposeful in that I think there's something useful in categorizing yourself into a category of note-taking type or thinking about yourself possibly as a hybrid of a couple of different types. The reason is that I think there are truths about how we take notes that are sometimes difficult to admit to ourselves or perhaps things we do that we've never really noticed or identified before. And so by identifying what kind of notes we take and by identifying what kind of note taker we are, we can also maybe think about how to evolve our process, iterate our note taking, and make it more effective. So what kind of note taker are you? Let's get started. Our first category is the human transcriber. The human transcriber does everything in his or her power in lecture to capture every word that the professor says. What that means is that their notes for class are more like a transcript of what was said. This is certainly admirable and it's certainly impressive, but it does create one problem. At the end of the lecture, the student doesn't have a record of the most important things that were said. The student has a record of the raw material, the entire lecture itself, which means that now they have to spend additional time taking notes on their notes. So my tip to the human transcriber is this. Understand the fact that in every lecture there's a certain amount of filler, and that filler is not really serving any pedagogical purpose. That filler is not something you're going to be held accountable for later. So try to identify that filler to the best of your ability and try not to write it down. This will help you build a filter for what to capture and what not to capture, or for what's important and what's less important. This means you're going to be writing less and what you do write will be more useful to you in the future. Next, the aspiring artist, professional doodler. These notes are beautiful, they're creative, they're chaotic, but sometimes they're better off in an art museum than in your notebook. Usually when you look at a doodler's notes, you see that they've started with the lecture, but at some point they've gotten distracted. And in order to keep themselves awake, or in order to keep themselves engaged and listening, they've started drawing pictures, spirals, and shapes. Again, this doesn't mean that the student is no longer listening, but it does mean that those notes have suddenly become much less useful for future study. It's now difficult to know what was covered, and it's difficult to get any real information out of the notes. So, my tip for doodlers is this. Rather than draw shapes and draw spirals that don't have anything to do with lecture, see if you can incorporate those visual elements into your actual note-taking process. For example, you might draw elaborate bubbles about really important ideas or key concepts. You may draw arrows or clouds or lines between concepts that are connected. I once had a student who actually drew a thundercloud and lightning bolts next to really important ideas. So there are ways to get, bring that visual flair to your notes while still making sure that the notes have some important relationship to the lecture that's being given and to make sure that they're legible moving forward. Next, the anal retentive type A perfectionist. Students who are perfectionist note takers have been praised throughout middle school and high school for how beautiful, pristine, crisp, and clear their notes are. I know this because I was one of them. But here's the problem. All of the time and energy that you invest making your notes beautiful means that you're not investing that time and energy in making sure your notes are capturing the right information. So here's my tip for my perfectionist note takers. The next time you're taking notes and you write something that you want to erase, rather than taking out your eraser, cross it out and move on. Yes, I know, it will be a blemish on your perfect notes, but it will help you build a tolerance for imperfection that will help you take notes more quickly 
and it will allow you to take the time and energy that you've been investing in taking perfect notes and instead invest that time and energy into taking better notes. Next, we have the too cool to take notes person. This is the person who shows up to lecture, sometimes late, sits in the back of the room, and takes no notes. Sometimes they don't even have a pencil or a pen. Now I understand that that doesn't mean that they're not listening, it doesn't mean that they're not engaged, and it doesn't mean they're not a good student. But we know from cognitive science, we know from learning strategists, that taking notes is an important part of concretizing the information in your mind and of assisting you in comprehending the material and retaining it over a long period of time. So, even if you don't like to take notes, even if you feel like it's too much effort, even if you feel like it interrupts your listening of the lecture, what I challenge you to do is take some notes. Some notes are always better than no notes. And maybe over time, you'll actually find that having some notes will help you study much better than having to recall all of that information from scratch. Next, the competitive note taker. The competitive note taker is a person who allows the notes that are being taken by their peers to affect how they take notes. So if you're taking notes and you see someone taking longer notes or faster notes, you start taking longer, more copious notes. Or if you see people who are not taking very many notes, you might start scribbling so quickly or typing so fast. Essentially, the competitive note taker falls victim to peer pressure, and they take notes according to the things that are going on around them. The tip for the competitive note taker is this. Your notes are a tool for you. They're not a tool for the person sitting next to you, and they're not a tool for the person sitting behind you. If you have some misgivings about your note taking, or if you think that your strategies or your practice could be enhanced or could be made better, then I encourage you to take some of the strategies that are given in this video, go to a learning specialist at your school, see if there's an academic resource center that you can plug in with, or talk to a friend who you think takes really great notes and have them help you think about your note-taking process. But don't make changes to your own practice without being deliberate and thoughtful about why you're doing that. Next, there's the Facebook addict. This is a student who's distracted by social media and lecture, who spends more time on Facebook and Instagram than they do taking notes in class. Again, I want to emphasize, this doesn't mean that this is a bad student, it doesn't mean the student isn't listening, but it does mean that they're missing a key opportunity to create a record of the most important information being given in class to help make their study time more efficient in the future. Usually the reason we get distracted in lecture is that we feel the lecture is boring, we don't feel fully engaged, or we don't feel like our time is being utilized in the best way. So, my tip to the Facebook addict is this. Try to step away from social media during lecture, and instead, if you feel like your time is being wasted, repurpose your time to do something positive and proactive. For example, you can review notes you've already taken for the class, or you can make note cards or flashcards for key ideas or key concepts. Or you can review a section of the textbook for the course. Or you can even catch up on some reading for that class while you listen to the lecturer talk. Remember, just because something doesn't seem important in lecture doesn't mean it isn't. And so you want to be aware of the fact that different professors and different instructors are going to have different styles. And just because the style doesn't engage you doesn't mean that you should be on Facebook. Finally, the active note taker. I admit that I'm biased, but the active note taker is the type of note taker that I think we should all aspire to be. This note taker is not writing everything down, but is making a deliberate effort to write down the most important information, the key evidence, and the primary concepts that they're going to need to know for the exam or for the quiz. This note taker is thinking not only about what they're taking notes about, but they're also thinking about how they're taking notes. What's the most efficient way to organize my notes for this class? How much of this do I actually need to write down? How much of it do I think I'm going to use later? So again, they're being active in their note taking, not just thinking about the material, but also thinking about the process of note taking itself. When we look at the notes of an active note taker, 
we see evidence of careful deliberation, we see a lot of thought, and we see that the student has taken the raw material of lecture and they've put it through the process of distillation and critical thought so that now the notes represent a version of the lecture that's been thought about very carefully already. There's no need to take notes on these notes. They can just be used. Now I want you to think of these seven categories and try to place yourself in one of these categories. Which note taker sounds like you? And if you sound like a hybrid of different types, which hybrid are you? And what strategies can you use to enhance your note taking moving forward?